Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Tales from the Riff. Uh, we thought we'd open up with a dick joke. <laughs> <laughs> As in the word dick joke. Dick joke. That's it. Thank you. Thanks for that dick joke there, Miranda. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right. I'm Blaine. I'm Mo. This is Toby. I'm Miranda. And here we fucking go. Yeah, with our powers combined, we are a duck bill platypus. Not quite the Power Rangers, but close enough. Yeah, what? and today we have a very special guest. We have Mr. Cody Sousa of Hatred. How's it going, Cody? What's going on, guys? Glad to be here. What's happening? Not too much, man. How is life in California right now? Oh, dude, living the dream. Um, it's starting to get hot out. Uh, luckily, I'm no longer in the AC profession, so it really doesn't matter to me anymore other than it just affects me because it's fucking hot out. <laughs> so, but uh, that's California heat I'm complaining about. Like, you know, mid, mid-85s, you know? No, I'm teasing. Uh, no, it's been good, man. Uh, spotty weather over here. Um, ripping and roaring, just staying busy um, with, with the Hatriot camp. As you see, we're always uh, got, got little new tidbits here and there going out, but uh, yeah, all is well over here. So, cool deal, man. Well, uh, my boy, our, our boy, Toby Saltzman here is uh, he, he was the one who said, Dude, have you ever heard of Hatriot? And I heard of y'all. I haven't been, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll be the first one to admit, I've you know, just got into Hatriot and I covered the whole discography. All this week, prepping for this, and okay. totally blown away. Thanks, Toby. Thank you for putting the music Dude. out there. And yeah, uh, I mean, so, Toby, you want to kick us off, man? Yeah, man. Um, what's up, Cody? Uh, what's yeah, first happened, of all, Toby? I appreciate Pre- you uh, uh, actually answering my message on on Facebook and getting this uh, put together because um, I think it was it. My my first exposure to, to Hatred, honestly, it was uh, your dad's podcast when he had you on. Uh, I'd always heard okay. of Hatred. But I never listened, so I was like, okay, well, you know, let me check this out. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> kind of missing out, you know? Um, nice, man. Awesome. So uh, I don't remember if I, how we became friends on Facebook, if it was a, um, maybe I commented on a post. I don't know, something like that. Okay. So for a while now, Mo's been doing this podcast, and I was always like, man, I, I need to reach out to this dude. You know, I need to, you know, get him on the podcast, you know, get Hatred some more exposure, you know, especially around here. Um, hey, hell yeah. So... Finally did it. Uh, I'm glad to have you on, man. Uh, looking forward to the next album, and that's me feeding back, dude. <laughs> yep, it's all good. It's uh, we do we like I said we we got one ourselves. There's bugs and glitches all the time. It's just <laughs> part of it, man. So. Yeah, I'll try not to talk so loudly. I guess. Apologies no, to good, the man. listeners for the technical difficulties. It's all good. It's, it's just growing pains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you hadn't you you uh you experienced the band first with me actually fronting it on lyrics. So the first two albums are actually Pops doing lyrics on there, Mr. right? Uh, Papa Zetro, and then yeah, I took over from Days into Darkness, and then uh yeah, I've always been the bass player though, always from right. the Right. So, uh, the first album um, I, I checked out was actually the newest one, so I, I <laughs> so yes, like, I, I was I, confused at first, you know, with the vocals because I was like, man, that that sounds <laughs> just like Zetro, <laughs> but a little bit more, yeah. a little more brutal. It's good stuff. Yeah. I, I mean, just trying to evolve what Pops did in the first two records on the third record, um, add a little splash of death metal and just, just what we enjoy with it. You know, him going back to the mothership of Exodus and giving us um, the the reins to do whatever we really wanted with uh, with our band, ultimately. And um, that's the direction it went. And uh, you see it progressing even further more moving into um, uh, The Veil of Shadows, our new album coming out in July. So. Yeah. Did he? Uh, did your pops give you any uh, vocal direction as far as uh, you know? Because you guys almost sound practically exactly the same. I'm not saying you don't have Are your you... own uniqueness. No, no, monkey see, monkey do. I, <laughs> I get that a lot. I recently did a post lately of all the all of the vocal, you know, uh, vocalists of metal that I find influential. Big two, obviously, are my dad, and then Trevor Sternad from the Black Dahlia Murder. He'll give you a bunch of yipes and a bunch of barks. You know what I mean? Going up and down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Ultimately, like. Pops never gave me a lesson on how to sing. I think I was just that annoying kid with ADHD that just made noises all day long. So, um, you know, just pretending that I'm Mystique from the X-Men or something, whatever, right? Just manipulating the voice box in ways it shouldn't. But ultimately, one that always stuck was either copying Pops a little bit, which, you, as you've seen on, on the podcast, and Zetro's Toxic Vault, I try to pump it. It's the grandma voice, right? We're kind of <laughs> ripping on my grandmother, Zetro's mom. Uh, <laughs> And then, you know, we just kind of, 
<laughs> you know, you just push a little bit harder yeah. and then you kind of get a bark out of it. Um, yeah, has no vocal direction from Pops really as far as that other than once I started going and he was, you know, he'd seen what I had been doing. Um, he would coach me as far as pacing, calm down. I can tell by photos being taken of you. I can see a vein in your forehead, like <laughs> dude, quit pushing so hard. Right. So definitely something stamina was there. Uh, biggest part I learned from Papa Zetro though was songwriting. Um, mm -hmm. just, just didn't, there really is no rules to writing a song, but where do you dive into that infinite universe? You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, teaching as far as lyrics go, he's not teaching me how to write guitar, guys. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, really, it's uh, it was it's it's been a good passing of the torch, and um, I'm stoked to see Hatred with its second release without Pops. You know, it's pretty much our sophomoric album with a with a reband brand. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Fucking yeah, I, I did notice a difference uh, with the first album that you took over um, vocals, uh, a lot more extreme metal influence. Um, the thrash was kind of taken a little bit. A little bit more extreme as far as that. And then there's a, what's this song? Ethere That's Ethereal Nightmare. That's Ethereal yeah, Nightmare. Yeah, that one gets a lot of perception online. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. I, I, you yeah. can almost close your eyes and think that uh, Chuck Schuldiner wrote the uh, riffs, man. It's great, dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's project name was, because you know every band's got like a project oh, yeah, yeah, name, yeah, right? Absolutely. Or, you know, that, that that was Project Death for sure. You know, but uh, that one, that one is so fun to play live. Um, it seems that Spotify has really grabbed the hold of that one and put it continuously on their Thrashers playlist, you know, and mm -hmm. was a little perception of Hatriot kind of uh, uh, emerging out of out of the underground into at least, you know, like, you know, what, what every, every band has their song, right? You know what I mean? So as of right now, as the internet and the digital age is pr preferred, uh, that Ethereal Nightmare seems to be that song, which uh, was, was one I, I entirely wrote lyrics on, which was fun. So. Nice. I think that's the first one that popped up for me on YouTube. Yeah. So from there, I was like, holy shit. And so I had to go back and find, you know, start digging through, listen to the rest of the material on that album. And I, and I love that album, man. That's, dude, it's the shit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Just cool, a man. banger. Just to hear that you guys enjoy it, man. You know, this metal, there's there's no money out here or whatever. So the kind words and stuff and that, you know, someone's getting a kick out of it and that we're having fun fucking doing it. It's all organic, you know? Yeah, so. that, and that's exactly why, uh, you know, we, we started this podcast. We're first and foremost fans. I mean, the only one that's in this, that's a, a journalist per se is Miranda here. She's She, <laughs> okay. came, all, she came all prepared with the, uh, the questions and a little tablet. <laughs> So nice. she keeps she, yeah. she keeps you guys professional. She, then, yeah, right? she keeps yeah. us That's professional, cool. you know. But without yeah. without her, it's just run of the mill dick and fart jokes and oh my god, you're in a band. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. And like to see you guys have a cast and like even like you said, the non the non players themselves, right? Um the, the, I call it like friends more than fans, but the friends and fans of the genre itself, like you guys even reaching out to me and asking to be on your podcast is fucking cool. I'm a goddamn nobody, right? So this is <laughs> this is fucking awesome that um you guys are into in metal and like and 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 willing to put our name out there. You know, we try to do the same with our podcast not not side you know shouting but it's it's cool to see like their corona pissed some people off sorry oh, if i what? can't say that we might have to bleep that and uh something started churning in the metal industry whether it's like you know there's a bunch of friends i've met moderators that they just enjoy taking care of other people's pages and helping them be successful and being a part of the mix and there's just so many there you know i don't know i just see so many incantations of uh, of 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 different ways people are inserting themselves in the scene and like i said the fact that you guys are on doing running episodes and asking people like that that's freaking awesome man so. appreciate yeah. that man we um one thing that i feel like we like to do a lot on the podcast uh part of just mm -hmm. like you know giving artists a platform and fans a platform to listen to their artists is also kind of dig deep into your songs and your art and your craft and the inspiration behind it um, just, you know, like things that you don't get a chance to talk about. So would you be willing and want to talk about some of the inspirations behind some of your songs? Dude, yeah, I'd love that. I mean, it's like, honestly, to, to kudos to you guys isn't something that I that I hear or listen to that much as much as I listen to podcasts and stuff. So uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys have some some prize or song titles, pry away. I'll I'll let you know what I can let you know, and we'll go from there. Well, so yeah. honestly, uh, one thing we we do like to do is, is take it all the way back. Yeah, yeah. back yeah. to childhood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we like we like okay. to we like to get your individual story of like oh, you know shit. you know uh, just your your rise into where you're 
at right now with hatred. You know, just just bring us current, just going all the way back to the Stone Age, like when you were about oh, seven fuck. years old. If we're gonna hit like <laughs> musical milestones, right? Yes. Otherwise, I'm a chatterbox. I can be here oh, forever. Dude, I'm, I'm all, we're all about yeah. that. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, dude, as far as music is concerned, um, you know, I was uh, I was born into the music industry. Um, I know whether people want to hear that or not. I, something I've been flaunting a little more lately than I have is. Um, there was a point there when I was kind of, I'm going to go forward. I'm going to Tarantino you. I was, uh, <laughs> you know, I was buying this house that I'm in now and I'm like working my dead end job and hatred was there and it was a hobby. Um, but something over Corona kind of like, you know, churned for all of us. And it's, it's really something I've wanted to do my whole life. So Tarantinoing back, um, some of my earliest memories are my father on stage and my mother and I sitting on wedges on the side of the stage. You know what I mean? Um, as far as with Dio, not Ozzy, the Black Sabbath tour when he was a kid. I mean, when I was a kid, obviously he was a young boy too at that time, right in his 20s. But uh, my mother took me out for the local date and uh, early memories of, of playing with Thomas the Tank Engine in the Black Sabbath dressing room on the ground. I mean, it's something that I, I can't even, I, I don't know if I could fathom nowadays. You know what I mean? It's, it's just it it's rather odd right um but like see having memories like that and growing up closely to people like gary holt and phil demel and other other characters throughout the metal industry or whether it be rob flynn right i know so some people in in some places of the world those are all just characters in the bay but there's kind of a back network of those guys are all really friends and stuff and my dad was obviously in that network so just seeing those people from eye to eye as friends from the get-go right um it, it, is 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 always sparked my interest into honestly what they do and immediately cut a lot of the fame out yeah i see where you know where they're at on stage and stuff and you know the crowds they play in front of but really at the end of the day they were just pops as friends you know what i mean that's how i always looked at things um asking them for suggestions moving forward texting here and there you know i had a question i texted chuck chuck billy before the uh, the bass strike back to her totally got back to me like help me out with something you know what i mean um it's just you know knowing all these people and stuff so that's kind of my drive is to um i've always wanted to i don't want to you know be a dick and say trailblazer is my father's footsteps but you know i was was born in this industry and i want to be a staple part of the metal industry moving forward so that was kind of the awakening at corona right um so i've always wanted to be a musician um like i said as as uh as as like we said i graduated high school i got into my career but one thing i also learned and i kind of talked about this a little bit on ted's podcast uh alive and streaming from death angel definitely check that one out okay um but uh he was uh we one leg up I had, and I think where where hatred, if I can finally press the gas and not even let up, just let the engine roar until it melts, is that I have established myself as far as to what the metal industry has in hold for me, right? So um, I've seen my dad get kicked out of his own band twice, or a band that he was a big part of, right? Exodus, right? And back into Exodus at that one time. I've seen its ups and downs. I, <clears throat> oh, me and my mother are going on tour with him, or oh, there's no money for that, or giant tours that are going to be the solutions to the world that never fruition. You know what I mean? Um, so coming into this, this industry where it kind of, we kind of know it's going to kick you in the balls. Um, I think it's going to give us a leg up. Um, kind of, like I said, my pops, he was in the industry and the music industry, and then he went to work, right? He had to raise a family after that. So luckily on, on, on my end, uh, I established my bills. I established a career, a pension, a retirement, all that for 14 years in the union and then realized, okay, everything's kind of coasting as far as life's concerned. It's time to jump back on hatred and do this full time. So, um, I, I keep bouncing around on my story here, but kind of describing my passion, um, what I feel, you know, we had, we had a good leg in growing up that I don't know other interviewees could, could tell you about you know mm -hmm. um going there a few you know there's a few sons out of richie cavalera shout out him max cavalera's son we see that um who else uh Corey's son from uh slip now there's there's some youngers stepping in the scene now you know what i mean um i'd love to do a second generation of music tour but yeah <clears throat> That would be ultimately. Sick. That'd be, that'd be <laughs> that's the drive and that's the story. Um, I know, like I told you guys, you guys are, say it all, dude. I can't. I can't paint a canvas. I'm jumping up and painting trees. I'm jumping down. <laughs> down. <laughs> but uh, but as far as you know, that's my musical my musical gear, my musical drive is to you know follow my father's footsteps. Um, as far as music is concerned, you know, hatred whatnot. Uh, growing up, I picked up the bass guitar in about seventh grade. Um, I got a giant Hondo four string piece of wood. It's downstairs. <laughs> in a case somewhere i still have it um it hurt my shoulder to wear it sucked the action was like a fucking inch and a half of my dad because he wasn't a goddamn guitar player so uh gave me you know those those spongebob fingers from the get-go but uh you know where he flexes and there's all the muscles on it 
But um, <laughs> yeah, I started that in about seventh grade and uh, just kind of ran through it. And once he found out I was serious with it and I was actually playing the thing with inch long action, then there was like 50 fucking pounds for a seventh grader. Um, he got a bass from Jack Gibson, his current bass player oh, in nice. Exodus. It was it was uh, my first ESP. It was a B205. Um, and I believe that guitar is still behind me back over there. Um, and that was like when I fell in love with ESP too. So kind of full circle that now, now, now I am endorsed by them, which is fucking awesome. Right. Um, right. even that more, it's more aesthetic. That's yeah, that's I'm more, more aesthetic about them. Um, but yeah, so I got, got that bass guitar from Jack and then worked my way into, uh, I think it was about ninth grade. We were jumping from seventh to ninth grade. I got into a melodic death metal band called Oscar Eye. And we were like the Amana Marth of the Bay Area. You can actually <laughs> mold articles about us. I mean, if you go metal encyclopedia, there's a cute little page, whatever, for whatever it's worth. But yeah, we were terrorizing the Bay Area and, you know, in outskirts, very fewly. Um, in Oscar Eye, my brother actually played drums in that too. And I was just the bass player, no vocals on that one. I had no idea how to sing at that point. Um, that kind of fizzled out, you know, life, life evolves, graduate right back into work. My brother continues drumming in an Oscar eye for a minute. And I kind of just go, um, just playing as a, a dude with an amp in his house for a bit. And then, uh, but another year goes by and, uh, pops wants to put a band together. He wants to put a band together between me, my brother and Costa Varvatakis. Um, I call him Costa a lot. It's a joke, but, uh, uh <laughs> of our current shredder guitar wizard here at Hatriot. Um, and we all met each other and we, we fucking got in the garage and we started jamming and pops was like, it was kind of just like a jam thrash project, you know? And he actually fucking thought we had the wit and the, and the power to go. Um, so he kind of turned it into his, you know, I mean, not, it was always our band, but it was, it was Zetro's next, uh, endeavor at that point. There was no Exodus at the moment. The Exodus existed, but they had Rob Dukes. Um, so yeah, we, we, we go running with that full force. We get picked up by massacre records who we're still on with now signed a second deal with. Um, we, we then put out, um, uh, heroes of origin, our first set record. And that thing was a blister of, uh, sounds a lot like Exodus. Uh, and I think that was the flavor pops was going for there, you know, pops and Costa. I had no hand in the writing at all. At that point, it was kind of what Costa Costa and pop said goes, um, they wrote that, you know, we went a little stint over to Europe for like a week and a half. We hit the Eindhoven metal meeting. We hit some local dates over there, which was awesome. Our first taste of touring. Um, we get home, we write another record excited that, you know, Europe show interest, like, you know, working your way into being a staple act in the metal scene, you know, you get, you get, you know, your call up, you got to keep working back for it more and more. Um, ultimately then we, uh, we wrote the second album, Dawn of the New Centurion. And that was about to come out. We had an East coast tour lined up another European tour lined up. And then, um, pops got the call back to Exodus. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it's so fucking old news. Now Exodus had mm -hmm. a bunch of, uh, uh, contractual gag orders on Hatriot as far as we couldn't play shows. Cause you know, they want to save the luster value of pops coming back to Exodus here and there. They had some tours booked. Everything was going on then and there. Um, so Hatriot continued on. We, we continued on as pops being the singer. He really wasn't there. He wasn't at practices. He wasn't at, with us writing stuff. Um, until like, it was kind of the point when we saw, it was like an article watching like Clay Thompson and Steph Curry of our, our San Francisco warriors, either the golden state warriors. I don't know if you guys are basketball guys, or oh, not. Yeah. but they are both children of, of players as well. Right. right? So that kind of came full circle and it really kind of hit us hard. It was cool. It was a jam band with pops. So we we're like, dude, you know, this is an industry and something that we want to conquer for ourselves as well too. You know? Um, we ended up writing a long, like manifesto letter of pros and cons. And the reason that we needed to move apart from pops, <laughs> sat him down at the table and fucking fired his ass. I mean, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, look, I know um, you're from Exodus, but you're fired. <laughs> yeah. It happened, man. We, we, we wanted to be hungry. We wanted to keep moving. Now there was obviously still some mucky muck ahead for us of not playing for a bit and writing a new album and maybe learning to operate without Zetro heading a band, give me a little experience in, in assisting with management, you know, everything kind of happens for a reason. 
So Zetro is removed. We then um, kind of, and, and I had to learn all his songs. And a few times I was like, what the fuck do I think I'm doing? Like, is no offense, <laughs> is Justice Mustaine going to take over for Dave Mustaine and rip all of his <laughs> solos one day? Like, it's not going to be happening, but I got to sing Pops' songs. Like, fuck, right? Um, so, yeah, that kind of got me going there for a minute. But, I mean, ultimately, it wasn't anything we can see, you know, anything I couldn't handle. Um, I would start doing it at practice. My brother was like, dude, you do dad better than dad does dad. <laughs> and it's like, uh, fucking, you know, I'm like, all right, cool. We can run with this like cool sounds good and then uh, yeah we start throwing the death metal element in and a uh, long five-year period until our next album came out from days into darkness um wrote that monster still proud of where that's at for today but i'm stoked to listen to that and then listen to the new album because listen to the new album about three times a day i'm an egotist no I'm kidding <laughs> i just want to find any imperfection in it <laughs> teasing but uh <laughs> um you i and, uh you and toby have a lot in common yeah right dude yeah, just, I, just, a, I, I i am yeah. my own worst enemy and i will beat myself up so i can get better man, I, I promise i do the same thing but um <laughs> exactly well, i record music uh, for my band and uh yeah, it's it's yeah. excruciating to get <laughs> to go back and be like, ah, man, that one little note, dude. I'm gonna re I'm gonna retract all the guitars. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, maybe not in that aspect, but like, oh, what am I going for here? Is this delivering? Is this hitting? You know what I mean? But yeah. like, I am so stoked to say, and I told the boys this, like, sign of chills. I was like, listen to the last three singles and listen to the new three singles, and like, not even a question. Hatred has progressed. Uh, the vocals sound better. The guitars sound better. The production sounds better. Right. So. Let me, we're almost at the tail end of the story. We'll get back to you guys, your podcast, right? Yeah. Um, I uh, yeah, we we put in uh, from Days in the Darkness comes out, and dude, it re sparked buzz and hatred. European festivals back on those, back on this. I'm like, oh fuck! Like it was the big question of the record label. It was the big question of everybody. Can can this band survive without Zetro? And and the answer was yes. I mean, even from our close that said your songs are too long and you still sound like Exodus, but you know you can go on without Zetro. The kid fucking you know the kid sounds good. He's got attitude. You know this and that. Um, got on the European festivals, had a couple, another couple tours lined up and coronavirus hits and we lost all of our momentum once again uh corona kind of lets up and we were a band that was doing live streams during corona we got on twitch during corona the room around me is kind of a product of corona as you guys can see sorry podcasters catch me on twitch um <laughs> <laughs> shameless plug uh but you know at that point it was like all right hey we're ready for this and it's like oh, okay and then we, we hit up all the festivals that we were on flyers of you can find them right we were we're right next to rings of saturn who uh we had recently had uh lucas man on our podcast if you guys know the band and my brother and him were in the first band together and we were on a european flyer together next to each other I'm like yes dude squad goals like from a little <laughs> shithole in california and here we are the eindhoven metal meeting or whatever it was uh into the grave i think yeah and then we were dropped off all of them and we're like hey we're still a band what's going on oh yeah well you're on the waiting list we know we know you're out there but you know just certain things happen you know certain people had releases certain buzz came certain buzz went right right place at the right time so again here we are um a few tours look like they're gonna start getting green lit we're excited to release the new album we're releasing our first single the uh hymn for the wicked tomorrow at 9 a.m in california so um that's that's the kit and caboodle man i mean without throwing tidbits like those those guys like because uh, i'm a podcaster too those guys you try to interview and they're like nah. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to run for you a little bit there right and like you have to keep pushing and stuff there but anyways just teasing so. <laughs> i think one question you definitely answered for miranda yeah i remember uh it was the the, the wait between um the last two albums right yeah yeah because i was curious about um well I, like I just noticed with your albums, um, at least with the first two, I kind of want to go into the, the themes and like the topics y'all write songs about because I noticed there seemed to be a big difference uh, after that little like five year gap. Um, okay. Yeah, there were. It seemed like with Ethereal Nightmare, um, like from Days into Darkness. Um, mm -hmm. I want to talk about what inspirations there were with that album as opposed to the first two albums. Because I know the first oh. two were, like, a year apart, and they seem to be, like, you know, some learned themes and shit. Yeah, yeah. I know, Pop, like I said, Pops and Costa handled all the writing. Pops is in Steve Zetra Souza handled all the writing. As far as lyrically went on the first one was, was Pops, and then musically was pretty much Costa with Pops' you know, George Lucas thumb down, thumbs up of approval, right? Mm -hmm. um, but... Um, we try to almost stick with the same theme. So I think that's, uh, that kind of comes out artistic, how 
we tried to come out with the same themes and you feel it is a little different. Um, like Ethereal Nightmare, for example, and you were asking, Ethereal Nightmare is actually about Freddy Krueger. Um, at the oh. end of the song, when I start counting, that's actually mocking on his nursery rhyme when All I right. count up to 12. Oh. I'm like, five, six, fuck your crucifix instead of get your crucifix. Right, yeah, yeah. I kind of, we, we go through that. So um, why I always loved Freddy Krueger is he was a guy I could not escape from. I was terrified of my dreams, right? So let alone I, I was like scared of him and like, well, I can be sleeping on a safe when I sleep with him, you can't right the nightmare was so real but it's not real right and he could kill you in it so anyways that was that was like that was the theme for um ethereal nightmare we just kind of ran with it um my brother thought it was kind of corny that we did the the <laughs> mocking of uh, the one two freddy's coming for it, right we kind of did our own version of that and I get a lot of praise that people think that's their favorite part of the song. I'm like, all right, cool, sweet, let's run with it, right? <laughs> the crowd, the crowd loves to chant, and I usually yell when we're playing that live. Hey, everybody, help me count to twelve! You know, <laughs> <laughs> so everyone can, uh, everyone can jump in that one. Oh, but uh, oh, oh. so, what uh, what album have you been a part of that holds the most value to you, and why? Oh man, I, of course it's always going to be the new baby that's coming out, right? So the last album, I would say, what was where from uh. From Days Into Darkness was was like, I was so proud of that because we left Pops, right? Uh, I had input on lyrics for the first time. I wrote my first few songs that time. Um, <laughs> being told that I did all right on that. I'm not a person like, yeah, I, I killed it, right? You know, um, but that, uh, of course, I was very fucking proud of that. I was very proud to get away from Exodus, get away from Dad. Um, it be its own band and its own merit. Mm -hmm. um, but then this new one where... So the last record, we still had management that was the same from Pops, if that makes sense, or the mm -hmm. same same guy that was running us, Mr. Ace Cook, and we love him to death. Um, but it kind of came to the point where the youngins, and I say uh, dude, we're thirty now, and I want to keep saying youngins, but there's <laughs> you know the old we call the old heads, the old heads in the thrash metal scene out here. We we kind of had to you know tell them, hey man, you know I. I, I run a multi-million dollar air conditioning company. I'm pretty sure I can run a multi-thousand dollar band. Right? <laughs> so <laughs> we can figure this out. Um, so good question, my brother. That This new album coming out is is entirely like my baby. I, I took the management role over. And yes, we do have Craig and Lum from Heathen. He is, me and him simultaneously manage the band together. He's pretty much like my legal. I'm like, hey, Craig, what's going on here? Like he helps me through the industry and is, is kind of training me as my go. He's kind of like my Obi-Wan Kenobi right now um but yeah so definitely he manages hatred but, but a lot of moves uh, it, it's funny right there's always managers of bands but there's the guy in the chair if that makes sense yeah, right makes sense. there's yeah. you know gary holt has a manager but do you know who makes all the decisions for exodus gary, gary holt makes all the decisions for exodus <laughs> right so uh it was it felt good and in one thing about being the guy in the chair I don't mean to sound egotistical all the boys know that we're an equal as a voice. There's a committee and it comes to me, right? So I won't like, oh, well, fuck them. This is better for us. I'm doing it to matter, no matter what. It is a group consensus, kind of like a democracy that comes to me. I discuss it with Craig and Lum, our manager, and we discuss it with the record label, make whatever happens. So yes, I love the last album, but this one, I am excited to see what happens under the new management reign, for sure. And I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Super you'll hear man. tomorrow, man. Oh, so good. I was like, uh, Oh, I, lo I love my own album and like that's uh that's if we're gonna dude. talk about <laughs> no like well you know like a lot of like it, we're making music for us we're right. like if people are enjoying it and getting on board with us fuck yeah man but it's uh it's even more death metal it's a little less thrash metal mm. it's a little shorter songs because everyone says our songs are too fucking long which <laughs> isn't why we wrote that for everybody but we'll get on you know we're on a little bit of different of a writing format um there's some melodic parts in there you're gonna be like is that fucking in flames influence in there you know what i mean nothing bad right i mean there's nothing wrong with flames at all right you know uh there's nothing wrong with some melodic death metal that we're gonna put in there you heard like you said you sounded like shoulder was on the last album that wasn't old hatriot this right is, so i'm excited to see the band <laughs> progress and evolve yeah dude that 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 description yeah um now I'm even more excited. So that's good. I'll let you know when <laughs> yeah, I hear him. <laughs> Dude, yes. I mean, and like I said, everyone, if you if, if I could shameless plug right now, um, there's a link on our Facebook uh, or Instagram, link in bio. Just we all the pre-saves, pre-ads, pre-orders are up for the new album, The Veil of Shadows, coming out July 22nd via Massacre Records. Um, we really hope this is the push that um, gets us out of the underground as we kind of saw other up and comings like Power Trip before us, right? You know what I mean? Seeing right. some bands actually come out homegrown grassroots, you know what I mean? No metal industry getting in the way, man. So we're excited for it. 
He's basically telling you to go buy all his shit. No, yeah. it's not even. You don't even see that. You can you can go pre like and pre add all of that, and it doesn't cost you a cent. Yeah. I'm totally one that's like, dude. If digital's your platform, digital's my platform too. I hate to say that, right? Mm -hmm. So um, there are the albums of my buddies and bands I truly do support. I will buy their CDs, and really, they're more like they're almost like LPs to me. I don't even know if I play them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Just because I just want them, just to physically have them. Well, we definitely. So. I know I. I personally, whenever I go back uh, in post production, I, I include all your websites, all your social medias in the, in, in the oh, caption. So don't worry about that. Yeah, but, uh, the, the, the Wait. Bot, he normally uh, gives the uh, the person we're interviewing the, the time to be Gene Simmons. That too. Promote yourself. So. Oh, I love that. That's cool. good, man. And, and I don't mean to, I don't mean to be keep taking over and keep saying shameless plug this and that. Uh, oh, we're just excited. We are in the quarter of a new release of an album, man. So that's uh, every time I get on social yeah, media, that's the dude. that's the wildfire we're running with right now. Hell so. yeah! Yeah, with a podcast, it's it's kind of what we want to do is is expose people to new artists. So by all means, you know, promote yourself. That's that's what Hell we yeah, want. Hell yeah, man! Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and funny, you, you were talking about uh, you know taking that next step. Uh, found it. Pretty interesting today. I was I was watching one of your videos and I was scrolling through the comments on on YouTube, and there were a mm -hmm. lot of guys, you know, making in these comments are like like hatred is the best like new thrash band, and they were like putting you alongside all these bands, you know, that that you're like name dropping and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I think the I think the the buzz is out there, man. So this next yeah, it's an absolute soon. honor to hear that. Like I said, man, like I tell you earlier, there's no dinero. It's all passion. So for people to include us in that rank, they don't have to because who pops is or whatever. Uh, I'm just glad the music speaks for itself. Mm. Yeah, so, so uh, um like with songwriting with this new album what mm -hmm. kind of you know having all this it sounds like newfound artistic freedom in a way and being able to uh, like ethereal nightmare um it's it being kind of inspired by freddy krueger what other inspirations came to you in writing this new album what goes through Ooh. your head when are you put pen yeah. to paper yeah. Um, so we follow the theme of Hatriot singing about a monster. There is a song about a monster. Um, the song, or the title itself, The Veil of Shadows, um, is actually a reference to the upside down what Stranger I, Things. That's they what I call thought it initially. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. It's gnarly. Very, nice, very, man. very smallly. They refer to it as the Veil of Shadows, and they kind of drop that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they keep calling it the upside down. I think that's because what society went with. You know what I mean? Right. But that's a twist to that. And that's also why if you look at the new album cover and you can turn it upside down, it becomes a different picture. Oh, no shit. Um, <laughs> inspiration behind that. <laughs> so um, that's definitely in there. We have a song about a serial killer. We usually have something domestic violence or serial killer themed. That's going to be in there. Um, we still try to stay true to the, the 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 nasty parts of America. Hatriot doesn't mean anything politically. It's just a spin off the word patriot, right? So right. it's just like, I am no patriot, just a hatred, right? <laughs> what are like like our nice. songs murder American style and one less hell to answer about domestic violence or, or just a violence in the you know suburbia. Um we definitely come back with with that. Um there is songs about people dying on the operating table. Um there are songs about a whole army of clones um g getting an executive order and and turning on a bunch of laser wielding fucking uh uh laser wielding uh, I don't know. There's a song about Star Wars in there. I don't know. I was about to say, I was about to, so. say to everyone to everyone in our, our younger audience who, who didn't catch that Star Wars reference, you're wrong. <laughs> it's May the 4th. Leave the Sorry, I was, poser. I was, wait, wait, it is it is it's May the fourth. It's May the fourth. It is. Oh, it yeah. is May the fourth. Be with you. Um, um, if you read the the song titles, the song "Forceful Balance" uh, is about <laughs> is about how the force will forcefully take balance and choose one side or another. So Cody, uh, it, it, I know the boys. The boys don't want that to kind of be a secret. I did that once live. We actually played that song live as, as a treat. And uh, it, and I said it once. And Rob Flynn was actually in the audience. It's just funny. My brother was like. Just let him figure out it's about Star Wars. You know what I'm, <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and speaking so, of which, it, Cody, is that a lightsaber on your forearm? Oh, yes. Did you guys catch that? I did. I have a, what? Oh, I have two shit. That's fucking sick. So I got, I got Vader and I got Luke. I have good and evil. All my tattoo pieces are like, I got Dr. Robotnik over there, and then I got then the Empire, and then I got oh, Sonic yeah. and sick. the Rebellion. I got Master Chief on that bitch. I got up and down here. I got to fill in. I got to get my, my angel over here, though. But yeah, I do a good and evil side for my tattoo theme. Now, um, I know that you said that you're kind of happy about like taking the reins over and doing the whole hatred thing, you know, kind of finally being able to do your own thing. But uh, 
have you ever thought about maybe doing a track with like you on vocals as well as your dad and maybe throwing something like that out there either for Hatred or for Exodus? I would love that, man. Uh, I, I would either way. Uh, it was good to maybe these first two albums to get away from Pops. If on the next album, if Pops wanted to come in for a song or whatnot, I think that'd be fucking raw. I think it'd be pretty um, gnarly if y'all both did like some fucking vocals together and just started fucking screaming together and like that you know, would like be it, cool. Like he kind of has like the classic, and I kind of put the new version scream out there, like you know, or the, the way I do it, the way he does it, two ways you can say it. But yeah, no, that's fucking awesome. No, I was just asking. I know you got your own thing with Hatriot and everything, and you probably get no, tired of answering yeah, questions. Totally like cool, that. man. Exodus was actually, I was lucky enough. I've sang with Exodus one time at the. My dad pulled me out. They were playing the Regency with Municipal Waste, and I did Sick. the second half of War is My Shepherd with oh, him. Nice. It's actually on YouTube. There's like one little small video. Someone got it. Uh, ecstatic. It was cool, man. Like banging up next to Gary Holt and stuff, and Lee and Jack and my dad. And I was like, oh, fuck. It was crazy. But yeah, they definitely show some love for us. If they ever wanted some Cody Hatriot vocals, I'd give it to them in a hot second. But uh, <laughs> I have nothing else. Cool. So I got, I got a question. Um, in the, the the world of metal, there's been, you know, several instances where you have brothers, you know, playing in a band together, different instruments and stuff like that. It's, you know, like Dimebag and Vinny and stuff like that. Yeah. Normally, it's like a drummer and a guitar player. But what would interest me about you and Nick is it's it's the rhythm section. So like how yeah. how does the <laughs> I guess the uh, the sibling bond go? You know, as far as like you know how locked in you are. Uh, you know, do you does he play a beat and you're like, yeah, man, I got that. And like, just totally, you know, totally just know what to play over him or vice versa. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like lately as, as we've evolved more as musicians, um, it, it's gone better and better. Right. But it was funny when we were kids. Cause it's like, okay, yeah, you got a bass player and a drummer, two of which are learning their instrument. Um, and it's like putting two chickens in a box and shaking it. I don't know <laughs> what the fuck's going on. Right. Like <laughs> there's symbols going off. There's kick where it shouldn't be. The bass isn't tuned right. You know what I mean? But uh, as far as like, so that's where it was as kids now. Oh yeah. He'll start, you know, going with the double bass and I'll follow him tremelo picking, you know, like triplets and stuff. And um, we'll just go fucking around when Costa breaks a guitar. We always go into like a little jazz groove and shit just to kind of like, <laughs> we call it stupid challenges as he's got to put a guitar string back as quick as it possible. And like, we'll just write lyrics and just be dumbasses, Right. Um, but yeah, no, I feel me and him really click. Um, as far as playing, as far as, uh, like I said, the, the, the group council that leads to the chair, you know, like us all managing the band as, as, as a voice, me and him click really well. I, I, I like working with him. I like that. I can yell at him and him kind of, uh, you know, he yells at me back. It's, it's, it's a uh, creative <laughs> arguments happen a lot. Right. But, uh, that can, can happen without people like slamming the door and quitting forever. Right. He's my brother and I know he's, you know, uh, he knows I'm his brother and uh, we work well together, I guess. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome, man. If you could uh, say something to inspire the metal community and the people and the other bands that are, like, just upstarting, you know, what would you say to some of the listeners? Dude, uh, the biggest things that I've learned is just stick with it. Like, your, um, your brand necessarily isn't going to always grow itself. So just stick with, like you could put an album out. And if you don't touch the post, if you don't touch the social media and no one knows, then no one knows it's kind of sucks. Right. I see a lot of bands out there that have really good product and it's a sad, necessary evil is to get on the social media and post every day and post, you know, um, uh, videos, things that make you current, things that make you different. Um, just be about the digital movement. I think pops had me, um, secluded from the digital movement for so long. I just wasn't a computer guy. I was, but I wasn't as far as like taking my music to the computer side. I was like a good video game or two. But don't be scared to get on Twitch. Put yourself out there. You know what I mean? Um, just stick with it. Find good level-headed people that are in bands and, and just do what's passionate for you. Um, support your scene. I think more now than ever. I mean, Hatred's been a band for 10 years, but post-corona, I've tried to be going to more shows and just being a part of my scene feels awesome and helping them out. And that my band does have a, you know, an okay number of, 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 of views and likes and clicks and that I can shout other bands out when they're shouting us out. And like, I don't know, the whole community feel, um, it, it's awesome. So I, I, anyone that's in, I recommend just dive into it. Um, start going to shows, start meeting people, start, you know, creating music, stick with it. When the bands around you fall off, that's how the new bands start to, you know, arise. And there's a lot of bands out there. So, um, do what's passionate to you and do what makes you happy. See that Blaine? 
Start your OnlyFans, brother. It's hope for you yet. Yeah. Two, Embrace the digital. Embrace yeah, it. Two <laughs> Embrace the digital. Two follow-up questions uh, regarding that. So I was talking to someone that Mo had on the po- uh, podcast. A few, uh, yeah, podcast. We do live there. Podcast. <laughs> um, you know, about how digital media has, I guess it depends on who you're talking to. It's either been a travesty or a majesty for, you know, the music community. And um, so I was curious, uh, just regarding what you said, how do you think it's affected musicians and their art having to constantly be pumping out content, having to uh, kind of get a little bit more competitive? Um, not that the music industry wasn't always competitive, you know, but it seems like it's more about quality rather than quantity at times. Would you agree or disagree with that statement? To some, to some respect, right? I mean, if we're instantly going to go to Gene Simmons screaming that rock is dead and that <laughs> yeah, if, 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 if it's not good, people won't listen to it and people listen to me. And it's like, all right, Gene, then why isn't rice the best food in the world, dude, right? <laughs> it's the most populant food in the world. So he just doesn't understand. No, teasing. But uh, yeah. <laughs> It's, right. it's different, right? Because you're, you're constantly pressured to put out new content. The content can't suck and it has to, you know, find the realm of not pissing the hashers off, I guess. Right. Cause like, isn't that what we all like? Everyone's like, Oh, how's the album received? Right. And it's like, you know, in this world where someone is constantly hungry for material, um, I, I would say, I would say, I would say it, it's kind of a catch 22, right? Because the user, the user end ultimately is going to win. You're going to get a bunch of content from all over, all a bunch of people. Some people are going to be stuck in their curmudgeon ways and never give you that digital or, you know, give you the above and beyond. You're only going to get the CDs this and that, right? You know, let's go Judas Priest. Let's go, you know, some of the older bands are just keep it, keep it, uh, you know, the what, what pen, pencil and pen, right? Uh, paper and pencil, right? <laughs> so, but now with the newer bands, it's like, you know, you need to be, you need to get ready recognized and kind of like what i said what sucks is like i wish i could release eight slipknot volume three and not do an album for fucking seven years after the fact right but i just can't it'll get swallowed it will you know you heard in my 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 short little story of the up and coming of hatred um corona was enough time to kill buzz to fall off of festivals and and pops you know leaving the band and you know getting shut down so for bands to get their chance and you know you just got to keep swinging at it you can't you know uh it sucks, right? But I, I'm for it. I'm you. You got to be about it, otherwise, it's just gonna swallow you whole. Really. Now, uh, going a little dark and grimy, but what would you feel like was your lowest point as a musician, and what pulled you out of it? Like, because we have like just a lot of people that like get immensely discouraged, and I don't know. Like, can you maybe share an experience that you had where you just felt like I don't know, just total utter shit, and what pulled you out of it? Yeah, fuck, like we're talking like Rob Flynn in the darkness within or something, like his, his depression song. No, but uh, dude, so as a musician, it was probably that lull time of when I left Oscar Ryan before we had started Hatriot. Um, kind of got with the 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 girlfriend girlfriend love bug had got bitten pretty hard. Had a place together and everything, and I. Dude, like my craft was not sharp at the time at all. Um, like I said, our buddy Lucas Mann is—I don't know if I've ever told the story. You guys get an exclusive yes. of Rings of Saturn. He had just started Rings of Saturn, and they were actively looking for a bass player. So we were kicking it one day. I was like, "Hey, man, can you know, do you want to come around some beers? or we'll try out." Bro, it was the worst tryout I ever had in my life. I stopped him <laughs> and go, "All right, bro," because you know, if you've heard Rings of Saturn, it's fucking epic to the max, right? And it's just like I was like, "All right, bro, I'm gonna let myself down here. I'm not gonna be able to play this with you." So. <laughs> Kind of put me in a maybe you know a, a deeper, darker dungeon to continue practicing and get my craft back a little bit. I mean, people go through changes, and I was, I was that was between my eighteen and nineteen years, right, old year old, right at that time. So yeah, I mean that's where that was at. You can't let failure upset you or or a, or a wrong um, trial or tribulation. It's where you that's where you uh, you learn from and you get better from, right? So it's where you want to draw the line in the sand. You fail at one thing or. Um, fail out it, get better and continuing until you know life's over <laughs> keep on keeping on baby fuck yeah hit that blue moon I that's did. what I'm talking about yes. uh-huh. dude I, I mean I wish it was an IPA now you're calling me out but it was, I was looking for a little tasty beverage during the podcast so. mm-hmm. uh, oh, yeah. I too admit to having a recent blue moon uh, addiction I guess it's pretty good man they're it's creamy good. they're creamy yeah, yeah. <laughs> a nice, a nice, a nice citrusy. citrusy taste man it's got a 
I don't know, you know? We're not, we're, we're not <laughs> endorsed no. by Blue Moon, man. No, of course <laughs> not. Pull the I'd brakes be so Proud. fucking excited. <laughs> Proud plug, though. Proud plug. Absolutely. <laughs> Blue no. Moon, if you'd like to endorse the pot. No. <laughs> right. It wouldn't work for me. I don't drink. Yeah, <laughs> no, oh, jeez. <laughs> we'll look. get you some, like, uh, what is that? Evian water. Or oh, that'd be br- brilliant. I, I love, or some <laughs> Red Bull, even. I mean, Mo, just, just three. Mo, you're looking kind of bashful. You want to ask the man a question? To me? <laughs> yeah, you. Uh, mm, I have hey, this is how I met my wife was on the internet. Come on now. We guys could turn into something here. <laughs> he has a nice beard, huh? What's that? Yeah. He has a nice beard. Yeah. Hey, nice Not nice really. Beard. I try. You have a nice Mo's beard. beard. Yeah, you definitely awesome. have a beard in there. Mo has a nice beard, you know, so hey, man. Oh, I was. <laughs> no, but uh, I like to uh, ask this question every now and then, man. Like, what, what was one of the favorite moments of yours that, that happened on stage? Ooh, uh, favorite moments of mine that happen on stage. Did you see any tits? <laughs> that was that was at a young age. Every time I see tits, I jump for joy as a young and now I can give a fuck less. Uh, it's funny, like the you know, in, in TMI for anybody, the wife would be like, "Yeah," and I'm like, "Fuck you, I'm tired. <laughs> no, it's not even worth it anymore." You know what I mean? I mean? Let's be honest. Most uh, metal show, it's it's a sweaty dude tits anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> sweaty dude tits uh, and a lot of bo. <laughs> I have I have a, I have one as my recent our most recent show we played in Concord. Would you guys care to hear? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us. So we were in we'd never it was it was a uh, it was like an underground show. So there was a lot of friends there. So not like oh we double encore, but we we finished the set and I was like screaming for like one more song. So we do one more song, and we're playing it. And Costa's guitar just dies out of nowhere. I think from turning the tubes off and turning them back on too quick. Something had an issue. And like, it's just like he's in, in his solos go for bars and bars and days and days and days. Going back to like how I am memorize all of our stuff, whether it's a guitar part or not, uh, in my head, I totally go up to the mic and start scatting a solo. I'm like, <laughs> Right, and then like everybody in the crowd looks over, points at me, and like starts doing the fingers, and you just see the whole crowd start laughing in the same moment, yeah, like a like hundred awesome. people just like ha, ah! like dude, it was the most wholesome thing. Even Coast is laughing at me. Everyone's laughing on stage. Like it was like by the time of a double encore, the show was over. We were just having fun at that point, you know, like we were killing it. But yeah, I I, I totally scattered his whole solo until he got his guitar back online. That was fun. <laughs> Fuck yeah. It's solid, man. It's good looking out. <laughs> right. Other favorite moment stage, probably be uh, watching Pops. Um, watch him, or going out and singing with Pops in, uh, the, at uh, the Regency in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And then moments I'm not even on stage, like being a kid and getting to stand on Slipknot stage um, and just watching that fucking row of people, That's right? Badass. You know what I mean? Just the feels of it or... Um, uh, Machine Head letting uh, one mayhem year they let all the all of everybody on their guest list on stage for their set and that was fucking cool right just seeing like how many fucking people are out there and um, the reason that that I, I want to do this and uh, inspire many and just hopefully get them through that bad day or um, if they enjoy the, the melodic thrash death metal that we put out fuck yeah man <laughs> what are some of the uh, melodic death metal I mean you named out a few of them like in flames and and whatnot but what are some of the uh you know, from being that you're from the Bay Area, but or what foreign bands that really inspired you, if any? Yeah, I mean, dude, like I said, so in high school with Oscar I, um, we were a, a Monomarth wannabe band, so we all thought we were Vikings, so Monomarth was definitely on that list. Uh, you could put um, Children of Bodom on that list. Dragon Force at that time was huge on that list, right? Um, Inflamed, I mean, I can go forever down the the, the European uh, Arch Enemy, right? Anything uh, out of yeah. Gothenburg, Dark T- Tranquility, The Haunted, At the Gates. Um, dude, that was at that time. That was perfection. Yeah. For me as a kid. I, I'm a huge um, haunted fan for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. dude. Uh, the made me do it is still one of my, oh, as you said, haunted, right? Made yes. me do it is one of my favorite yes. albums to this Period. day still. Period. Yeah. Yes. The thing bangs up and oh, down cool. from get yeah. to go. And like, it just, to me, it's like, it's almost like they're slaughter to the soul and it doesn't get the credit for it. If that makes sense. I yeah. think that album is fucking amazing. But anyways, yeah, everybody, so. everybody always is, is the first album. Everybody talks to man, mm. but I don't know, dude. That is the second one. Yeah, made me do it, dude. Oh god, right, like, like, like fucking Jensen is on his shit on that fucking thing, oh, man. God. Dude, yes, too it fucking is. good. And then, yeah, I mean, we were all over the place. Now, um, we're you know big trivium guys. We got to shout out our old drummer Alex Bent. He actually drummed in Hatred before my brother did. 
Uh, my brother was the second drummer of Hatred. So the current drummer of Trivium actually was in Hatred, believe it or not. Wow. That's we love to run with that. We are so proud of Alex, dude. We see the pictures of the stages he's playing in front of. And when he's out around at home, he got, he got us into the show. He took care of us. Uh, but yeah, um, super proud of that fucking guy. So, so was, was it uh, anything you could discuss via uh, tour wise? I mean, is any, any, uh, any locations can you tell us about? Like, I don't know. Uh, Louisiana. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's say let, let's say West Coast. Let's say West Coast right now. Okay. Yeah. The, the Working on a West Coaster. The answer they all dread because they can't talk about it. <laughs> the question. Uh, it was. Nah. It's in our neck of the woods. Um, <laughs> but it hatred has not been on a U.S. tour. So regardless, there will be dates. If this one comes to fruition, I I have gone all the way to the day before a festival before a tour and it cancels, right? So oh, I do not believe it until the wheels are moving. Yeah. Um. But yeah, there's there's talks of a good one. Uh, no confirmations or guarantees or anything yet. But uh, keep an eye out for Hatred dates for sure. Sick man. Speak, sure. Speaking of uh tours, okay, this is like a kid question almost. Who would you say that you would aspire to tour with? Like, can you name like like three or four bands that you would just absolutely like like to die for? Like, fuck yes, this is who I'm touring with. Yeah, right. Like, oh, fuck, dude. Like I said, I, the, the, all right. So people have already mentioned and whatever. The Black Dahlia murder, definitely first and foremost. Oh, yes. um, Trevor, I think Trevor got me into wanting to be a vocalist more than my dad did. Just watching my dad do it. Um, I just loved how dude has the dual tones and I totally not copied it. Right. But like I, I have a tritone thing going on. I have like three different main noises that I make. So the Black Dahlia, Dahlia murder would be awesome. I'd probably watch their set every fucking night. Um, again, before Alex was even in Trivium, I find Matt Heafy as a huge role model um, as far as the guy that sits in the chair is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's an excellent businessman. Um, the way he's moved Twitch and has cash flows on the side, the way that he's constantly rolling content, as we talked about earlier, putting new albums out that I believe are of par to put albums out. Um, dude, if I was on tour with Trivium, that would be fucking nuts and a half. I mean, dude, we, what, we could say if Slayer came back for a reunion tour and Hatred got the gig, that'd I be fucking raw, that right? That'd be awesome. Um, I mean, dude, I, I I can only ever dream about playing with Talaker, right? You know what I mean? Talaker. Hey, it's, <laughs> so, it's, um, it's, it's not impossible. It's like you were saying er earlier. Just don't fucking give up on it, you know? Right. Just never give up. Got to keep going. I would love to tour with Pops. Everyone thinks that's an easy one, too. We have played with Exodus. We have not toured with Exodus, you know? Um, to all the haters and naysayers, like, oh, it's nepotism, you know, it's just because your dad, like, man, on the tours and shit, dude, we are, we are fighting <laughs> through this mud just like everyone fucking else fucking is, you know? So, man, I, I heard something about like, uh, Exodus. I was wondering if you could tell me if it was true or not. So, they came out with a shirt a while ago and it said Fed Exodus on it. Did they get in trouble for that? <laughs> yes, I believe. So, that was like right when the internet was starting up, too. There was the sleeve, it said Fed Exodus. What did it say? Death and destruction guaranteed overnight or something like that because that was like their old sleeve. Logan I, oh, and man. they straight up ripped on it and I want to say they got a letter but they kept doing it anyway I mean they, I don't know I, I remember I remember still seeing it I think Exodus officially has ceased and desisted of it but yeah I remember still seeing it but like that's a big thing now like everyone does the Pornhub logo with their band logo <laughs> you know have you seen that one before ah, I got someone laughing I was just I was just showing them I bought a Pornhub hat like like not even a couple days ago and <laughs> yes. shut, shut the front door you have a husky <laughs> Yeah, we yes, were just, we that's just... my that's my girl. Uh -huh. I got three huskies over here. Oh, bro, do you, can you see the husky on my shirt too? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I wore white. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. So I got my husky right there. Uh, oh. That's Trixie. That's my girlfriend. My wife is often jealous of our bond. And it. then oh. I have a uh, blonde. Where is he at? German Shepherd right there. Or German oh, Shepherd. Yeah. Hello. I love German He's Shepherds. chilling. So yeah, you can see their fur on the ground and shit. But yeah, that's my girlfriend over there. What, what's your husky's uh -huh. name? Her name is Trixie. It's short for Bellatrix Lestrange. Oh, I love it. Um, oh my god! Right, but we've never we've never even called her Bellatrix. That's just what her full name is. I love and her. then uh, Anakin. Uh, my my other dog's name is Anakin. Uh, nice. Anakin Skywalker. Yes, um, obviously. Our uh, all of our animals are named after murderers. So our cat, her name is <laughs> Charlie yes. Manson. Yes, a girl with the name Charlie Manson. So we, I don't know we, why, but we figured uh, Anakin killed people, and so did Bellatrix Lestrange. So. 
Um, yeah, Bellatrix like Lestrange killed animal. Sirius Black. How, it, like, <laughs> she's like the most awful serial killer of all time. <laughs> Dude, right? Isn't it, she crazy? Our, so. our Huskies, we, we got the Game of Thrones theme. We got two Targaryens, and we have yes. Sa- and, and we adopted one Husky. We call him Samuel Tarly. <laughs> Samuel Tarly, yes. <laughs> She's we, coming over now. She's talking about her. Yeah, she knows. Oh yeah, I, I love. I gotta get well, at least. Totally. At least get us. My, my my wife has to see your dog. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll bring her up on camera and everything. This is great. <laughs> Fuck oh me. yeah. See, I told you. Yeah, man. she's a long haired too. We didn't know we were getting into. She was just like some little jelly bean when we got her. We rescued her from like some fucking apartment that was like hella ghetto, and then. Uh, <laughs> Dude, her hair just kept growing and growing. I'm like, oh, I guess I got a woolly husky, and now I wouldn't have it any other way. I love the woolly husky. Love it. I told you, though, for music, dogs, man, it was going to happen. Oh, <laughs> she, she looks at you with such love. Her name's, her name's Bellatrix Lestrange. Yeah. It's Trixie. Hey, look, let's show them radar. Trixie. Sam's right here. Look, look here's one. That's here's radar. Oh, yes. <laughs> radar's like, what They're the like, fuck? They're like, what the fuck are you doing? Let me right see if um, I can back up enough. You know what? My camera isn't mounted. I can move it for you. There we go. I need to get me one of those cameras. So yeah, you wanna do you want a secret? Yes. This is my phone. Oh, this get- is my phone. And it's it is an app called Camo. C A M O. I actually use it on my Twitch stream. It's so fucking good. Dude, it's and, so uh, good. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, so you download a plugin for your computer, you download a plugin on your phone, it's absolutely free. It's called Camo. And uh dude, it just runs your phone as a webcam. Um other ones I've used in the past and you get a phone call and shit, it interrupts it. This one, dude, your video feed will just keep going through a phone call, it'll mute everything. Look at oh, you got one that just looks like just like her right yes. there, the white one. Yep. Yeah, that's uh Luna. It's Luna. It's my girl. <laughs> Look at him smile. And then this is Sam right here. I don't know if you could see him. Oh, yeah. Samuel Tarly. We love Tarly. Oh, dude. Yep. Yeah, my wife is like, I love you, but we're getting a pity next. I'm like, I will cry. When they, when we, we don't say when our dogs die, they go to college. But when my dogs go to college, uh, I'm going to cry until I get another husky. <laughs> Yes, Anyways, we nerded out there for a bit. Yeah, they're a big part of the podcast. People like uh, people like kicking it with them. There's a little button they can press. Their camera pops on screen. I usually give them a treat. So <laughs> I basically uh, made our uh, our one and only shirt. Basically, it was inspired by the by our huskies. Nice. Let me, let me just pull that. Uh, I'll show you real. It's quick. almost like the three dragons theme you got going on. Yeah, exactly. There, right? We got Luna Rainey's Targaryen. We got Radar. The tar- Radar Targaryen, the first of his name, and Sam nah, Tarly. <laughs> that's cool. Are you stoked for the new prequel? Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> yeah, dude, I saw the images, and you just see that white, creepy hair, and you're like, let's go, oh, more Targaryens, like, yeah, dude. It's going to be sick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let alone today, if we're talking about May the 4th, did you guys see the Obi-Wan trailer that dropped today? I think it's, no. I, isn't it, I think it's actually out right now. I, I think I uh, saw the, it on like fucking Disney Plus or some shit like that. The other no, day. it's not. Uh, it's, it comes out on the 27th. Oh, okay. You're wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, no, because everyone was mad it didn't come out today. But there, there, there was one scene. I texted my dad it and sent it to him. Like Uncle Owen, fucking, and Obi Wan are arguing, and he's like, "When the time comes, he needs to be trained as a Jedi." And Uncle Owen's like, "What? Like you trained his father?" And I'm just like, Ooh. "Oh, oh, oh, oh like fucking Uncle Owen dropping <laughs> burns, fuck, <laughs> literally burns, and he burns oh. the death." Anyways, we'll stop. There. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, look, there's a picture of it oh yes <laughs> sick you guys got to get that out man that's cool oh yeah it, it's out <laughs> it's, it's very oh, much out it, it's out so oh, uh, all right I could, i'll definitely send you a link if you're interested do it man cool but uh what would, what would you say uh as far as like any misconceptions that people have about metal in the community like what would you say to like i don't know because i feel like a lot of people have like they have a lot of people that are out there that don't really care for like metalheads. They just think that they're like just I don't know, fucking like Subpar. assholes. You know, yeah. a bunch of asshole meatheads. No, totally, I got you. Uh, so one thing, going back to my wife, she's not a metalhead. That's one thing I love about her. Uh, I think there is some ladies in metal that the most interesting thing that going on for them is how big their boyfriend is, which is not the case of me and my relationship. Um, 
Now, uh, she did not go to metal shows, and she only goes to metal shows to support me. And she oh, thought yeah. she was going to get into, like, getting your teeth broke, everyone this, everyone that. And she's like, oh, my God, like, I watched the mosh pit, and, like, you guys pick each other up and pat each other on the back. Like, if you actually watch what's happening, mm -hmm. right? She's like, once I started to get to know people, even though they look scary, they're, like, the nicest people I've ever met. And, like, yeah, dude, like, we're a, we're a bunch of, like, fuzzy um nerds that you know love kitties and and love my little brony and <laughs> everything the, else right that's the so. exact fucking answer that i was looking for too right yeah dude there's no you're gonna get your face pummeled brother <laughs> drop a fucking macho man randy savage on us right now make me cut a promo but uh yeah no i mean it's it's an all loving accepting community um, we definitely have our thrash metal elitists. We definitely have our Heshers that are probably worse for the scene than they are better, right? If it doesn't sound like Bonded by Blood, it fucking it sucks. Well, Bonded by Blood's <laughs> never going to come out again, so you guys all need to fucking accept that. So. <laughs> Dude, yes. So Mo often says that this podcast runs like a Tarantino movie, so I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mentioned that earlier. Like, yeah. We're all over the place. Let's that, handle business. That was a yeah. good reference. Yeah, um, so... So kind of going off of things you learned in the uh, as you've gotten farther in your career and lessons that you've learned, um, what's something that you've learned in the past 10 years of your career that you wish you knew 10 years ago as a new metal artist? Um, I think it goes back. See, I'm kind of answering that content question slowly. Um, be more persistent at it. Be about it. Be, you know, I was in hatred, but it was my hobby thinking that, you know, it would run like wildfire itself. I have a manager and my dad doing this and doing that. I, I really would tell myself, you know, nothing's handed out. Nothing's guaranteed. Nothing, you know, um, just work as hard as you can at it. Like you have everything else and it'll come to you. I hope. Right. Yeah. But I mean, it'll get you to this point. I mean, they could never go farther for me. I mean, I've seen. Right, we all know about the musician that's the best musician you've ever known, but can't get anywhere, right? So, yeah. um, just continue putting out content, continue being a good person to work with, right? Um, everybody wants, you know, uh, to walk work with someone that's competent that they feel comfortable with, uh, have your band under control, right? You know, there's uh, there's things definitely, you know, that I would tell myself, um, but probably the number one thing would be stick stick with it, stick with content, um, just just be about it live the life right we get into that point of show where uh for my selfish reasons i need to know no the six <laughs> the six albums that you cannot live without why did you choose six because six 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 Check out the big brain on Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I almost pressed my soundboard button. This isn't my podcast. You almost had me press the sheesh button. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. It's not on. Oh, it's not shit. on. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, and I don't think we're sharing computer audio. <laughs> I'm not set up on my screen. Six, huh? She looked, she looked, she um, immediately put like, the put machine head the blackening on there. Um. And these not maybe metal the ones that I necessarily listen to all the time, but maybe the most influential albums to me getting to the position I'm at. Um, actually seeing my dad live the Exodus dream, put Tempo of the Damned on there for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I got the blackening, Tempo of the Damned. Um, I would want Ritual by the Black Dahlia Murder on there. Good choice. Uh, nice. I said, like I said earlier, probably The Haunted Made Me Do It would be somewhere on there. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what am I like four or five now? Yeah, four. these are always hard. I, I I better just like hey, just shit all over my face with some CDs. You're like ah, oh, let's do that. <laughs> but you're, you're lucky. Mo used to give like like thirty seconds. Go, you know what? Blade Blade does the thirty second bit. <laughs> oh man, dude. Yeah, and like and then when these questions come, dude, I swear to God, like I I totally freeze up. I'm like. Oh. What's what's a music? <laughs> I don't know what I listen to. Like, two what's hours from now, you're gonna be like, oh fuck, uh, dude! It's this. all that kind of shit. Well, I gave you, I gave you like the first four that really, you know, that really, you know, we talked about those hitting hard. It's okay. Uh, I mean, there's like probably thousands of albums out there, but I suck at this question. I'm sorry. <laughs> Reason. So uh, it's okay. You got like 12 seconds left. <laughs> oh, no, no, shit. Uh, <laughs> fucking, I don't even know anymore. No, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> oh, um, good. I can open up iTunes and start screaming down it, but I think we're all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, What's your favorite part of like the, because like bands have different ritualistic things when they have like their writing process. What's your favorite part about the writing process? Like when you're writing music. Ooh. 
I feel we actually have that in uh, thanks to digital. We actually have that um, smarter, not harder. If I can go back to the last question about things I tell myself or a band that's aspiring, smarter, not harder. Um, I don't think you need to practice three days a week. My dad does. I don't think you do. I think you can practice one. I think you can practice one day a week together, and everyone practices on their own. And there's no problem with that, right? Right. Um, Where are we going with this again? Sorry, you, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> did you guys I'm, like, I'm totally you, guys, you guys got me stuck on the six CDs, and I'm like, uh, 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 I'm still shivering over here. Um, what but yeah, no, uh, pop sync. Uh, I think I think the digital the digital realm opens up a lot for that. We uh, the writing process moving forward. Um, Costa actually does at his house. He'll scratch tracks. He'll send over here. Send to my brother. We will program drums. Yes, guys, if you. You don't need to track drums every time, you're, unless your drummer's like this egotist and he's going to cry. Uh, my brother <laughs> can understand when it's not an album or a demo. We will use a drum machine because it sounds amazing and it takes 10 fucking minutes, not 10 hours, right? <laughs> we will already have programmed drums to the album. At that point, bass kind of follows the guitar. Um, solos are written, and then one of us will snag lyrics off the Dropbox. So we all kind of work off of the Dropbox um and yeah that's our songwriting process now so music still pretty much handled by costa uh, or kevin wrote one song on the last album For, props to kevin though the first one to break the mold of costa writing music on everything um and yeah like i said it's just uh the process seems to have evolved but we seem to find a, find a way to hone it more and more and more if it took us five years to put out days in the darkness and this album took us two i definitely know what hiccups we had this album around mm -hmm. and um i'm hoping this process would be shorter next time around is it more of like a feeling it process or would you say it's more like by the numbers because you got your technical dudes that like to fucking like write shit down on paper and just go blah, 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 all day long and right the people that's uh, like, oh shit that no sounds it's cool. definitely it's definitely feel with a structure definitely feel with a structure like i said when pops kind of limited and speaking for me as far as writing lyrics go um that's the writing i tribute to hatred other than where if i think a bass part sounds better than what costa's rhythm is doing i'll do that right but um yeah it, it's 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 feel with with at least following the structure of the bars right um are you gonna do you know there's you know certain 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 styles right the angel of death style where you say one word and then you ramble afterwards right uh, what kind of right what is what is your cadence right a lot of times you know the guys will send me lyrics i'm like Bro, this is fucking words on paper you gotta hum it to me or sing it to me i don't know what the fuck you're thinking right like i do some weird shit with words right like um so but yeah it's it's always constantly refining um i think that's what kind of makes each album it's its own experience is that it was everyone's a little different and there's always a little hiccup here and there and uh it's all part of the process fuck yeah how did uh well i mean I, you've kind of already answered it already but I, I'm guessing a lot of these changes, like COVID, is probably a big result of that. I know that's how I've I've been doing stuff uh, because of COVID. You're writing music, sending the riff to this guy, yada yada yada. Yeah. Um, how do you feel COVID has affected the music industry in a positive way? Um, in a positive way, I'm, I'm not endorsed. I am an affiliate, but I, I think that um, I think, like I said, we're embracing the digital. So I, I'm first going to shout out Twitch. I think it's an awesome fucking platform. Um, I love it myself. I love watching it. Um, I love that you can be a musician and not even in a band. You can just be like a guy that plays an acoustic guitar or your violin and you can log on Twitch every single night and someone that's interested will find you and enjoy you and support you for that. Right. You don't necessarily have to wait till Friday or Saturday night to go play the coffee shop and fill up the straw hat full of tips. Right. <laughs> you can do that every single night of the week. Right. So the guy that only got, Oh honey, I knew him. He was playing at the restaurant for years. Right. You could be that dude every single single fucking day working on your brand right now are you the kind of person where last night on my stream i had seven eight people in there right a lot of people will get pissed off and turn it off i, I don't care seven or eight people are enjoying me do what i would sit here doing anyways practicing my guitar you know what i mean um i think that definitely helped as far as you know twitch i think the streams the live streams are pretty freaking cool we've done a few ourselves we even did a 360 stream a few months ago. It's still up on our YouTube. Um, quality is user level. I've, obviously, I don't own a computer or a, uh, a camera studio, right? Um, I think the live streaming has helped the music. 
Um, I think that just the lull and no shows has helped people dive a little further into maybe things they hadn't tasted before. I also think Corona helps for, and I'll use me as an example. A lot of times I would not just go to shows because I was burnt out before. Um, now I go to shows because I, I, I took, I feel like I took something for granted. I, I wanted to go to a concert so fucking bad and it was locked out Corona and you couldn't do shit. I remember we were at the barbecue spot down the street and they had a band playing a little a high school band playing in the in the in the parking stall with like caution tape around them and i'm like bro we're staying and grabbing a beer let's go like i needed it so and we stayed and grabbed a beer and i watched their whole fucking set so to me it makes me think twice i still do miss concerts a lot here being an artist myself having to other commitments hatred commitments work commitments family commitments right but uh yeah i think i think corona has impacted us some way positively and to maybe end off that subject is i think it brought us a little more together than we were i, I think so i'd agree with that i, I, I would I, I know personally like you know i i had a little break you know playing in bands for about three years and i kind of just stopped going you know local shows and stuff but now like every show i could go to i'm going to because I, I took it for granted like you know when i had it all the time every weekend you know, yep. so what? But it's now, not like it's that. Man, now it's like, hell yeah, I'm fucking going to see this shit. Makes Who's it playing? Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> Who's playing? Who's playing? Let's fucking go. Yeah. Who's playing? Let's roll, dude. Uh, I, mean? I went. Like, oh, I think I heard of those guys. Yeah, they're all right. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so. Last weekend, I just went see Braharia and uh, and Goat Whore in Houston at the oh. Scout Bar. And That's a great place. That place was packed to the gills, man. People were going really? insane. Cool, man. Yeah, I mean, like, in this. It was uh it was a period there where like post like the first few shows everything was sold out no matter what the fuck it was either too because people were just <laughs> dying to do something. Uh, Guarantee's got a little yeah. inflated there for a minute. I was like I was throwing numbers out there and people were saying yes and I was like all right sweet. <laughs> <laughs> people were confident they could make their money and I, I guess they did. It was back then and then it's kind of started to fizzle out and Guarantee's had to calm down. <laughs> I, uh, I have noticed that the shows are staying pretty pretty packed. Uh, oh yeah! In fact, I just Absolutely. saw, I just I just saw the Bay Area Strikes Back tour in New Orleans. And that it was a fucking madhouse in there, man. There was yes, dude. People on top. I've been checking people. in with pops almost every other day. He says the tour is absolutely phenomenal. They're almost all sold out. The fans are enjoying it. The bands are enjoying it. He's just like it's good feels everywhere, you know. Yeah, it just feels great to like be able to experience that again. You know, like the. Yeah, you know, the camaraderie and like you know, the, the brotherhood, and it's just a good time, man. I feel, I feel like every band has one. Does Hatriot have a uh, a super fan? Like a super oh fan? man, a super fan, uh, dude. I know there's a there's a bunch of guys online that really really help us out. A bunch of our moderators really help us out too. Um, I know our boy Metal Messiah. He's like on a bunch of local. Like this guy, he's out of state and a uh, big big fan. He's almost on all my Twitch casts. He anything that comes out of the Exodus Craig and Lum Hatriot team, he's all about. Um, there's a few of them. He's one of them. Uh, of course, big shout out to my moderators like Petey Bob Salad and Milo and Plain Old Bry and stuff. They're they're super fans in their own right, right? They take enough time to help me do my craft, so they definitely deserve a shout out. <laughs> you know? That's so. awesome. Man, if you could play anywhere in the world. I've always wondered this about any musician. If you could choose any, it doesn't matter if it's an arena, a country, a state, a city, wh where would it be and why? I mean, everyone's got to set up Madison Square Garden, right? I mean, that's always got to be. I know it's a wrestling, like, you know, selling out Madison Square Garden, brother. <laughs> but, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, that, I mean, I dude, I'd love to go back to the motherland. I'd love to go to Italy or Portugal. Those are my two nationalities. Um, I, I want to go to Colorado and play the Red Rock. I always see people like playing oh, the Red Rock uh, Col Coliseum place, out there. That place looks pretty cool. I mean, to count, you know what? Give me the grungiest bar you have, and I'll fucking play it. I want to play them all. Let's go. Every single <laughs> one of them. Let's go. Yeah, bring Hatriot down to the bayou sometime, okay? Oh, yeah. Do we? In my power, you guys keep spreading the word and telling people uh, about the band, and, and we will get there one day, I assure you. Cool. Nice. nice. Welcome to Cajun Hell. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cajun Hell. <laughs> so when I'm when when she's done, watch this. She's done. She knows she she can lift my hand off the mouse when she she's done being in the room. She's like, <laughs> so she'll like scoop under. She won't do it now. But as I'm like mousing or if I ignore her, I'm sorry about the dog. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's all good. We got video on our end podcast. Sorry about that, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's just precious. Oh, she's a brat. <laughs> <laughs>
I feel so. like we need like a like a cricket sound in between all these like long <laughs> awkward fucking pauses. <laughs> right. Well, well, I, I, I can see what's awkward. going on there. You guys are you guys are I see you laughing and enjoying your your end and your uh and then at it um I see you you know you got to hit the mutes and the cough buttons and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, right? there's nothing so. awkward about this Blaine. I'm looking at his dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's between me and I'm the dog. Lo- I'm looking at the puppy too. No offense, <laughs> you guys. She's I'm, pretty. I'm thinking about what I'm having for dinner tonight. Cuz <laughs> tacos is a contender, but then tomorrow's Cinco de Mayo, you know? You could do tacos oh, 41 sh- days. Yeah, yeah. That is already. quite the conundrum. What's the most metal food you think you can eat? <laughs> <laughs> That's a question. Thank you. The most metal food. <laughs> uh, it would definitely be something high in iron and magnesium. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Steak dinner. Uh, uh, I don't know. Escargot is pretty metal, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Eating yeah. dead gross snails. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty fucking like you know, someone's got to be a cool fan out there. Are wrong. Wrong. That's a Cannibal Corpse song in the making. Right. <laughs> this song just wrote itself. <laughs> exactly. Well, shit. Well, man, thank you so much for uh, for being our guest, Cody. This is fucking treat, man. I feel like the laughs was completely nonstop. Yeah. Dude, man. Awesome. Thanks for having me on here. Um, if you guys, you know, after a nice, healthy fucking podcast cycle, if next quarter, next trimester, next half year, next year, if you guys want to okay. cook it, uh, Kick it, hook up again. That'd be awesome. Oh, yeah. I'd love to. Absolutely. Maybe we can do like a dual cast. Maybe have yes. one of you guys That'd or be you guys wicked. on our cast. That'd be cool. That would be Definitely. amazing. Plug your cast on our cast. That's what we're about, man. Oh, dude, um, yes. Yeah, lately we've been trying to do like the rule of three, and I always say this at concerts. One, buy a ticket. Two, buy merch. If you can, I can't. I'm broke. I get it. Three, tell someone about the band. In this case, tell someone about the podcast, right? Let's yep. just try to spread the word of this because we're just trying to spread the word of shit. Definitely. That's it. Yeah. That's what got, we're about. I got uh, two things for you. So the first one is before I ask uh, my last question, could you uh, push anything that you want to talk about before? Because we've been asking you this question, like questions, you know, this entire time. Is there any questions you want to ask us or anything you want to push out for Hatred or just anything like I know this whole time has been the spotlight towards you because that's the whole fucking No, point. yeah, man. I'm, like, I'm like the, I'm, like I said, I'm normally the guy behind the mic asking the questions too, as much as I podcast, okay. which is once a week. So it's a different, it's odd being on this side in a minute. Um, but yeah, like I said, the new album's coming out July 22nd. Um, it's The Veil of Shadows. Uh, or yeah, oh my god, dude, I'm, I'm I'm so out of it. I'm sorry. I wake up at three in the morning for <laughs> work, but uh, yeah, the Veil of Shadows coming out July 22nd via Massacre Records. You guys, pre-order, pre-save, pre-add. Um, follow us on our socials. We're on Discord, Instagram, Twitch, Facebook, um, TikTok. I think there's a minor page for it. <laughs> Shameless plugs, but most importantly, man, be sure anyone that is listening here, um, support a local band that you like. Tell somebody that about the band that um that that you enjoy. Whether it may not be the biggest band or the smallest band in the world. Just spread that word in the in, in the in the the voice of conversation. Also tell um tell friends about podcasts like this that 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 help support things like that and people just having a good time. And-